Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Creator Talks. I'm your host, Christopher Calloway. Well, I initially said I was going to do one episode a week on Thursdays, and here I am Monday, first thing with a brand new episode because I've had a lot of requests to be on the show, and I have a returning guest, the creator and writer of Geek Girl, Sam Johnson. Sam successfully funded and delivered issues one through four of Geek Girl using the platform Kickstarter and is back with a trade paperback collection of the series where you can get all four issues of Geek Girl through this Kickstarter program, which runs for another 17 days. And we're going to talk about that collection on this show. In addition to talking about the Geek Girl trade paperback collection and other perks that you can get through the Kickstarter, Sam and I also talk about our favorite books of 2016. Now, the reason why I bring this up is that the Ringo Awards, which will be making their premiere at the Baltimore Comic Con in September, well, ballot nominations end at midnight tonight, the 24th of July. So if you want to cast your ballot for the Ringo Awards for Best Writer, Artist, Comic Book, Web Comic, Newspaper Strip, this is something you want to check out and go to the link to cast your ballot. I will have that link on the podcast. And I wanted to get Sam's opinion about the best books, writers, and artists. In addition, Sam and I talk about the new Doctor Who coming up for 2018. I wanted to get his opinion since he's from the other side of the pond and see what the fan reaction has been and what his reaction is. So, you know, Sam and I always find things to talk about, and it's always great to have Sam on the show. So... Let's get started with my conversation with Sam Johnson about Geek Girl. Lightning Strikes, here now on Creator Talks. Sam, welcome back to Creator Talks. Hi, thank you for having me back, Christopher. Hey, you're here to talk about your trade coming up for the trade of Geek Girl. Yeah. Kickstarter, uh, if, if you want to find this on Kickstarter, if you search geek hyphen girl. So this is the, the first collection of uh, Geek Girl. We had the four issue mini come out uh, November through March. And uh, yeah, and this is uh, Geek Girl Volume 1 Lightning Strikes, which sees our newly uh, minted superheroine go up against the the badass threat of uh, lightning storm uh, a woman with lightning powers and uh, geek girl for those who aren't aware is a hot popular co- college chick who lands these super tech glasses on a on a drunken whim and then she's sort of put in this position where she's got to use these powers because the uh, the resident superhero neon girl gets taken out by this mysterious villain lightning storm. Ruby's forced to step up, and uh, as I say, she didn't really think things through when she won these game of won these glasses in a game of strip poker. It was just a drunken whim, and uh, yeah, now she finds herself thrown in at the deep end of the superhero world. During this campaign, you can also get Geek Girl Zero which is very limited, actually, um, with uh, black and white art by Sally Thompson. So this won't be in the trade if you want to get that. It's also in the Kickstarter. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of different... I mean, that came out some time ago because it took, uh, it took a long time getting the right artist, as, as I think I probably discussed with you previously, in, in Carlos Granda, who's the artist on the, the miniseries and the, the trade. Uh, Geek Girl Zero came out a while back, uh, and it did well, and it was, it was useful in building up Geek Girl's audience ahead of the, the mini series. So, yeah, the, I've still got some copies left of that. And at the moment, you can get there's like uh, my friend uh, Amy cosplays Geek Girl, and there's a photo, limited photo variant. There's only 20, well, there's two versions of this, and there's only 25 copies of each. So, you can get that on there now. Um, and we're actually putting together some, some more like collector's packs uh, to go on shortly where there'll be other versions of, of geek girl zero and also we're, we're doing a, uh, a a limited print um of geek girl and harley quinn which you can get free if you order one of these collector's packs what we did with that was uh on the geek girl facebook group we had a like ran a poll who would you who would you like to see team with geek girl and uh harley's come out on top so we're going to be getting that and it's uh going to be drawn by uh Matt Olson, who drew the uh, the cover for the trade, uh, is a great artist. So I'm, I'm, he's going to be starting work on that as we speak uh, tonight, I believe, uh, and we'll have it turn around in a couple of days. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what he's got because I absolutely love 
is up. And that poll just ended? Uh, it, it ends today. Uh, and so by the, by the time people hear this, it, it will be out. And I can, having looked at it just before we spoke, I can see Harley is, is way in the lead. So I, I can say confidently it's going to be Harley that, that wins and gets the gig. Yeah, I cast my vote for Vampirella. I know it was kind of <laughs> not, didn't stand much of a chance, but I wanted. I saw it out there. And I'm like, well, I'll put it in for that because I'm I'm reading Paul Cornell and uh, Jimmy Brixton's Vampirella run through Dynamite. So I was like, ah, I like Vampirella. But hey, that all sounds good though. Harley Quinn. All right. We're we're looking to do potentially more of these these sort of things anyway. So uh, if if Harley isn't your your choice, your choice might still get a shot. So we might even you know end up reopening that poll. Uh, with with Harley omitted from it, and uh, yeah, who knows? You might get to see Vampy and Geek Girl at some point too. <laughs> and that uh, zero issue with the limited photo variant, I tell you, Amy was made to play Geek Girl, so that looks really good. Yeah, I mean, it's funny that because it's she sort of did that off her own bat. I didn't I didn't ask her to do it. I mean, she's into like cosplay. Uh, the, her cosplay name is is Lady Larkin. She's got a Facebook page for that. Uh, so yeah, she just she just sort of did that, and like here it is. And wow, yeah, nice nice job, Amy. Uh, so yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 cool, and I'd I'd like to get. Uh, I mean, she's she's recently had a baby, so her going to uh, conventions isn't isn't really practical at the moment. But I'd like to uh, get her out to some conventions in the costume at some point. Sure. No, yeah, we did talk about that last time. Uh, it might be a little tough in the short run, but yeah, these are yeah. these are great packages you have, though. I mean, you have uh, like you yeah, you mentioned, you have the regular cover. They're going to be collected together as a package, signed. And you also have the variant covers, the limited variant covers, which are really, really nice. Um, I like those. That's the ones I picked up myself was the variant ones. And they're also going to be as a set, all four, and you're going to sign those. Yeah, yeah. The limited variant covers are cool because there's all different artists involved in that. Uh, John Royal did issue one. He's the artist on Danger Girl. and His style is, is kind of similar to uh, J. Scott Campbell, who's, who's behind Danger Girl. Carlos Villas has, has got a cool sort of photorealistic uh, look with uh, Geek Girl and, and Nina Dante, the sort of unhinged alt chick with a cybernetic eye who's in issue two. Three uh, is, what was three? Three, I believe, oh, I'm, I'm losing it now because we switched <laughs> what was going to be the third cover because um, we made issue three a jump on issue. So because originally the cover was going to be Mr. Mashup, the villain, because we made it a jump on issue, we, we needed Geek Girl on the cover, so that so the variant became the main one by Will and Kaledger, uh, which is cool. And issue four um, is is limited to to is, is William Kaledger, uh, but it's limited to 100, only a hundred copies, so that's quite a quite a collectible one. And another thing with all this is, as I say, we're going to be introducing these these uh, these collectors packs where you get the um, the Harley uh, print. Uh, as well as like a guinea geek girl mini poster and what you'll be able to do anyone that's already ordered like you have the the limited variant set you'll be able to like sort of get this as an add-on so whereas you can't get you know you can't just buy the harley print individually you can yeah you'll be able to get it as an add-on so it costs you like the same as if you went straight into the getting the collector's pack now so that's that's quite cool so yeah i mean i'm re- i'm looking for it's the first time i've done like one of these limited print things i'm really looking forward to seeing what matt comes up with because i say i'm a huge fan of his of his work okay and you've got about 17 days left by the time this drops and when is this uh, trade coming out then once the campaign is finished trade is is coming out uh august 25th required summer reading if you haven't read it already uh is there anything else in the trade besides the four issues? I know we know the zero won't be in there, but what else? Anything else added to it? Just the um, the variant covers, because like the the limited variant covers, I wanted to keep you know limited, so they're not collected. Uh, but you've got the variant covers, one of which is is actually pretty rare, which is uh, Ivan Sanago did this uh, cover of Geek Girl in a comic shop. 
and it's like all that it's very super detailed with all like you know like not sort of official star wars but something that looks a lot like darth vader and something that's a lot like spider-man in the background <laughs> and all the all the geeks like wide-eyed uh can't believe their their eyes at, at uh, the sort of geek girl in there all geeking out and drooling over her uh, <laughs> and that's that's cool I don't think many people have, have seen that one because I it wasn't available from me I think the only place you've been able to get that so far is Indie Planet um, so yeah that's cool so all, all the ver- not the limited variants as I say because I want to keep those limited but uh, the variant covers are all in there yeah and at some point there will be further ongoing adventures of geek girl we just don't know when that's going to be yet yeah uh, that's i mean that's absolutely the the, the uh, as i may have mentioned previously um part of the deal when i signed up with marcosi the publisher for this was they they committed to a second series uh you know irrespective of of what happened with the first which was great because then i you know i had that investment to go beyond which is what i really want to do um I'm actually talking to Carlos, but Carlos, Carlos Grander, the artist, is, is on board for the second one. And um, I'm actually talking to him today because he has another project that he's got to work on, which will be basically a full-time gig. So he can't commit to doing Geek Girl full-time until that's completed sometime next year. However, there was, there was talk of he might be able to do you know pages here and there, and at the moment, he's, he, there's, there's something he needs, uh, uh, some sort of reference material that he needs before he can start on this other project. So I'm actually talking to him at the moment whether he can actually uh, make a start on it now. Because the first issue, the script is done. Uh, the second issue is is basically done, just needs editing. So, uh, yeah, and uh, it's uh, I'm excited with, with where we're going to go with that. And I think... You know, anyone that's got to the, the conclusion of the miniseries, which is left on something of a cliffhanger, you're not going to be able to predict where, where we, where, even where we come in with this miniseries. So, I mean, anyone that's, that's got to that point, uh, hopefully are going to be uh, pleasantly surprised with what happens. Did Carlos uh, reveal yet what project he's working on, his full-time gig yet? Because we talked about it last time, but we couldn't say what it was. Um, I, th- I don't think we're talking about the same project now because he's, he's just finished up uh, Heroes of Homeroom C, which uh, that was kickstarted, and that's uh, uh, a couple of superpower kids, um, which lo- looks really cool. So that he's just finished up. I'm not I'm not clear on. I don't know if he's actually said or if he can talk about what the thing he's about to work on is but this you can you can find this heroes of homer and sea on online and uh, that's that's anthony geyser is the the uh creator writer behind that and that looks pretty cool okay so folks who want to jump on who haven't had a chance yet to check out geek girl can do that through the trade or they can get the collected packs here and one thing i will say i've used several different uh platforms to buy books uh, not, i haven't used it myself to promote any books but kickstarter is a very solid one so you can be sure and having worked with sam before he will deliver the book's going to be there you don't have to worry about the this not coming through there's always risk involved with these campaigns but sam delivers and there's going to be more books and i can say you know for myself personally using kickstarter it's always come through it's been a very solid platform to check out new artists new writers new projects and support them yeah, I mean, in, in this case, there there is no risk. Yeah, it's done because it's it's done. As I say, I mean, it's it's not even a case of we haven't put the the trade together yet. This the the p- purpose of the Kickstarter primarily is is to get pre-orders for the trade. So it's not yet. It's completely finished. It's already gone to the pl- the printers. It will be coming out August twenty fifth. Even when you did the single copies, they came out on a regular basis. Yeah, well, I mean, that's, I mean, it took a long time getting them done, but that was important to me. I don't, you know, it's important to me not to fall into this syndrome of when's the next issue coming out, uh, or, or Rob Liefeld syndrome, as, <laughs> as, it, uh, as it can be known. For, just for it, if, by the way, if anyone like, like myself uh, was following Blood Strike and isn't aware after that being on hiatus for two and a half years or something apparently there's a the the current young blood uh series is going to have like a, a backup blood stripes 
uh, story running through three issues that will that will complete that. So that's good that that's one he's he's actually going to finish. That's great. So you'll have all that nice <laughs> '90s nostalgia. Hopefully, not the '90s nostalgia of late books. <laughs> Well, yeah, that, I don't think that's really nostalgia, is it? That's more <laughs> <laughs> look back in anger. But yeah, it's again like as I say, I'm I'm not even talking about a, a release date for for Geek Girl Volume Two yet because we want to have it all in the can and and all four issues come out monthly. But you know, it's um, I'm already thinking beyond that. I want you know my intention hopefully after and it's you know it's it's going well on on this kickstarter and and the facebook groups over 19,000 people now so my intention is after we've had the the first mini and the trade and then the second mini and the trade there's going to be a, a big enough audience there to go to a, an ongoing for the third that's that's my aim and i've i've got some real i'm really excited about the plans i've i've got for that and again what what I like and, and people have commented about Geek Girl is is it's not been predictable and that will continue. I, again, I guarantee there is no way, you know, assuming we 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 get to the third series, which I'm you know going to be working very very hard to to you know promote and and get to the level that we have a fan base to justify that. There is no way that you can predict what is coming your way in that series. That is great to hear. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to the second series when it is ready. Something you always work very hard at and prepare at to deliver the goods. And uh, yeah. the audience appreciates that. Yeah, but I mean that, you know, there's, there's, I'm, I'm very happy with what I've got coming in there as well. And it's, it's completely plotted out. As I say, the first two issues are scripted. Uh, just establishing. I mean, we've, we've, I've got a deal with, with Carlos where he will uh, at some point next year once he's done with this uh, project he's, he's about to start, he will be working like he did on Geek Girl 1 to like a fixed schedule of getting four pages done a week. So there will be a point next year where it, you know, properly accelerates. Uh, but uh, yeah, right now seeing if, whether or not we can get it started because it'd be nice to uh, get the ball rolling on it. All right, excellent. Hey, I wanted to bring up a few things we talked about on the last podcast. Um, you had mentioned to me that you were following Secret Empire, and I said, well, I haven't read it. And you gave us a, a quick update on how Cap became evil Cap Hydra. And mm. since we talked, I bought all of the Secret Empire issues and have been following that very closely. And thanks for the suggestion. It's been great. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you've enjoyed it, Christopher, because we've gone in, in different directions with that one. Uh, -oh. <laughs> uh, because though I found it interesting and and so forth, I mean, it it was more I I never actually got to the point of the Secret Empire series. It was more like the the build up in Captain America, mm. and I I just I can't get on with the 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 idea of it. It just it, I just found it too unpleasant to to have captain america cast in this role so i've been i've been reading what's going on in it but uh and i, I you know I, I i spoke to so I, I was at con last week uh speaking to someone who's who's, who's really into it but i for me that just the the notion of it the, the premise of of cap being this hydra it's it's not something i i want to uh get into really um, as I say, the, the build-up, I, I was in and out of Captain America. It was interesting, but uh, I just I, I, I just can't get on with it. But, you know, I, I'm not saying it's, it's, it's bad. It's just I personally want it to be over. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. And I've, I'm enjoying seeing something different done with Cap, which I know is going to turn around and we'll get the Cap that we've always known and loved for decades. Yeah. I know that's going to happen. It has to happen because... Well, they make movies about Cap, so it's it's, inevi yeah. it's inevitable, but the only downside to something like this, they do a lot of crossover into other books, which actually kills me, you know, kills other books that I read for me. I just stop reading yeah. them when I, all of a sudden, like Doctor Strange, I really enjoyed Doctor Strange. Uh, Jason Aaron left the book, and Dennis Hopeless took over, and Dennis Hopeless is a great writer. I mean, he did um, Spider-Woman. I really enjoyed that when he started doing yeah. it, but once they immediately, he this is a disservice to him, he enters the title Doctor Strange, and they immediately start off with this story, Secret Empire crossover. And I'm like, why? You can't even give him a chance to breathe with the character. So that that crushed it for me. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know anything about 
the behind the scenes of, of the, the create a change on that title. But I, I wonder if that was, you know, the editorial plan and, and that was the reason Jason Aaron left because he didn't want to be involved in that. And therefore, whoever was coming on was going to go straight into Secret Empire. I don't, I'm just speculating on that. Yeah, but uh, Jason Aaron still very much enjoying Star Wars. They're great. Well, here's some good news for you about Cap. Um, San Diego Comic Con is this weekend. Obviously, I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. But I did see in the news that Mark Wade and Chris Somney are returning to Cap. Right. Okay. Yeah, I love their Daredevil, and Mark, of course, used to write Captain America. So. Right. That's. I would like to see what they do with the character then, because Mark is very traditional in the spirit of the characters. Yes, yes, I, I, I get, I mean, that that's that makes sense with the whole what Marvel are doing with the legacy and, and all that. Um, yeah, uh, I'd, I'd be interested to see that. I mean, I'd, you know, I'm, what, what, what I'm saying, I, I know, I, I know I, I've sounded maybe a little bit contradictory because I did, I was sort of into the idea of Secret Empire before and then I've, I've kind of, yeah, I just can't get on with it. Um, and I'm not like a huge Cap fan anyway. I think um, it was it's certainly interesting what they they did, but it's just if you're going to make a, a, a character, you know, turn into you know the worst person in the world, Cap's not the one I I want to see that happen to. Yeah, and the only other problem I have with it is how they're going to resolve all this and how they're trying to bring in Steve Rogers now into the book. I'm like, um, uh, what's going on? <laughs> yes. And I mean, cause I, as I say, I have, I've been following what's going on. I've been reading the reviews and, and it all sounds quite, uh, misty in terms of where this is going. Uh, there's no real indication. I mean, like for example, you've, you've said that they've just announced, uh, about Wade and Samley reboot in the book. Um, well, for want of a better term, but when they announced previously all like, you know, the big Marvel re getting renumbered or the, the, the legacy books, all that cat wasn't in the lineup because obviously they, they don't want to give away what's, what's actually going to happen with him. So yeah, I mean, I, I really, really don't know how they're going to get out of this one, but I know they've, they've got a, I've got a big plan that, you know, they've been building for, for a long time back to, when they had that crossover where, where obviously Cap got uh, turned back to being a, a ute from being an old man, uh, which is what screwed him up in the first place with the Cosmic Cube. Hey, what else did you pick up this week at the comic shop, if you had a chance to go to a comic shop and pick up some books? Uh, I picked up Astonishing X-Men number one, uh, which was quite cool. Uh, it's a good lineup. We've got, I'm just looking at it across the room from me now. We've got Old Man Logan, Gambit, Phantom X, Rogue, Archangel, Bishop, Mystique, Psylocke. Uh, Charles Sewell writing it, Jimmy Chung. Uh, Jimmy Chung? It is Jimmy Chung, but it's Jim Chung. I, it, Jimmy to me. <laughs> <Okay>. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's quite cool. It's, uh, it's an extra side. There's not a great deal happening in it, but there's a nice... Saul's got a nice interplay with the characters, got a handle on these characters. I, I always find it difficult to properly get sort of locked into a, an X-book. They don't tend to hold my interest. Um, and I'm not sure why, but I, I'm on board for the next one of this. Uh, yeah, that's cool. But the, the big one that I'm looking forward to, which is out going to be out this week, is uh, Doom Patrol 7, which is... Uh, been on hiatus for three months because they kept slipping behind schedule slipped further and further behind schedule and that's uh, coming back with uh, Mike Allred doing a one-off issue where the chief uh, the guy behind the Doom Patrol originally comes back into the picture properly and uh, yeah that's you know that's my favorite comic at the moment so very much looking forward to that yes Yes, I know that's one of your favorites. Um, yeah, this week, uh, and I'm still going through my pile because I haven't had a chance to read everything. Uh, Britannia, We Who Are About to Die, number four came out, so that concludes that series. I haven't had a chance to finish it yet, but I'm looking forward to uh, finishing reading that series by Peter Milligan. Uh, Boom has. Who's that by? I'm not familiar yeah, with that. That is, it's a valiant title. It's not, right, right, it's not right, really tied right. in with the valiant universe so much that it really stands alone. Uh, which yeah. is set back in Roman times, and it's Peter Milligan's doing the writing and Juan Jose Rip for the art. 
and Frank D. Armada on the colors. Um, and it has a great David Mack cover, which I like. I mean, they have different covers, but that's always my cover of choice is the David Mack. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Sisters of Sorrow also caught my eye by Boom because uh, there was also a, a variant cover unlocked in my comic shop that I grabbed. Um, actually, on my second trip at the comic shop this week. Uh, and it's uh, Lilandro who does the covers on Bitch Planet. So okay. it's it's a really cool retro vengeance yeah. justice cover, you know, with the uh, muscle cars on the front and uh, a nun with a gun. So there you go. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> and well, you uh, can't you can't go wrong no. with a nun with a gun, can you? Have you have you seen the cover? I've I've don't think I've seen that specific cover, but I'm aware of this this series. Yeah, know? look that one up. That one's pretty cool. I think you'll like that. And um, okay. One I did a quick uh, recommended reading on my website was Betty Page. Uh, right. Okay. David Avalone and Colton Worley, and it looks just as good on the inside as the outside. It is lots of fun. I really enjoyed that one. So what's what's the kind of setup with that? What's oh up? well, this is Betty Page before she became a big uh, pinup model sensation. This is when she was back in Hollywood. This is at, it's all fictitious, of course, but it the premise is that David has her diary. And he's telling the story of her early days before becoming a big hit. And she's set in Hollywood. And there's a lot of mystery and intrigue and uh, uh, communists and aliens. So um, <laughs> it's an action adventure and they play it. She I means she's a heroine, basically. Uh, and they play it very straight. I mean, it's um, okay. it's got great little quips and language that she uses that it's very 50s. And it's very done in her – the way she would speak. Um, yeah. Just based on some documentaries that David has watched and studied about her behavior and how she acts and how she speaks. So her character is really kind of like the way she talks like the girl next door, like, you know, really nice and sweet, but she's a knockout pinup model. Yeah, so yeah. it's, but it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, and it's just a beautiful look at. It's great, great art. And, uh, yeah, lots of other stuff too I have, you know, um, uh, I want to get to that Batman 66 Legion of Superheroes, which is, uh, Mike Allred does the interior too. So that's one I want to check out. And uh, yeah, that should be fun. Oh yeah. It's just, I think it's just a one shot. Um, so yeah, it's, it's great to read that. And then Penny Dreadful, uh, the ongoing story of Penny Dreadful after the TV show. Yeah. Uh, and that's uh, on issue four and, uh, something big happens. I'm not going to say what, but, uh, you know, we lose some characters. So it's, uh, and some, well, it's, I'll say, that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. But, uh, yeah, that's a good one. That's really a good one. And uh, it's great to be able to continue the series post-show in comic form. You know, and yeah, good stuff. Um, cool. Now, here in, on the East Coast, we have uh, the Baltimore Comic Con coming up in September. And for the first time, they're going to have the Ringo Awards, uh, named after Mike Ringo. Right. And... I wanted to get your opinion on some things because their ballots close for nominations. Um, when this podcast goes live, it'll be that night at midnight, I believe, that the ballots close down. So you mm -hmm. can go to the Baltimore Comic Con site and vote for who should be on the ballot for best whatever. Who do you think for 2016 should be nominated for best writer, excluding yourself? Uh, well, <laughs> obviously, that's, that's my first choice, gone. But, uh, I mean, for me... Gerard Way, Doom Patrol again. He's he's you know he's he's really nailed it. it. You know for fans of of the Grant Morrison era of Doom Patrol, it, he's he's really delivered because it's it's not sort of aping that. He's brought brought back much loved elements of that, like Danny the sentient street, uh, who's now a sentient ambulance, and uh, just just hit the feel, hit the characters for me all the way. Gerard Way. Uh, and for a good reason, well justified. And how about the uh, best artist or penciler? I don't think. I mean, I Nick Darrington, I like a lot on on Doom Patrol again. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say at the moment there is a, a particular artist that I I follow. I don't feel we're in a sort of. Well, we're not in a sort of a superstar artist era. If I'm thinking of like. Marvel now. There's no one that sort of springs to mind. Obviously, there's plenty of good artists, but uh, yeah, I, I can't say there's anyone. I mean, I'm, I always like J. Scott Campbell, but uh, he's, he tends to be, you know, pinups and covers. Uh, how about you? Yeah, that's. I know that's a tough one too because no one just really like, jumps out because I really look at 
okay, who's in my pile the most? You know, um, I for best artist penciler, I I really had a hard time, but I just, for me, I just said Greg Smallwood for his work on uh, Moon Knight in particular. I really like that. Yes, yes, that was that was great. I really like that. Yeah, um, the I found the the whole thing a, a little disappointing, but not certainly not any reflection on the art, it, it, the style of it, the feel when you know Moon Knight's in this world, sort of uh buried in sand yes um it was it was terrific uh as a whole i wasn't that i really liked the series at first but it it was like 14 issues of just sort of the same thing um yeah i i wasn't bowled over by the series in terms of you know the content beyond the art but the art was fantastic but i am you know the the upshot of the moon knight series is, is he sort of got his head you know because he's got these multiple personalities and you know and a, a tenuous grasp on reality but he's he's kind of got his head together a bit at the end of that so i'm interested to see because uh, moon knight is going to be coming back in the marvel you know legacy line so uh, i'll be very interested to see where it goes i mean i, I in some ways, it was, you know, I thought it was a great take on, on Moon Knight. It really, you know, because the whole, he often gets compared to Batman. And I think in this series, when they really got to the core of the character, you could see just how distinctive from Batman he is. I mean, without his, his sort of traditional uh, flowing costume, there's there's not really a, gr- a great similarity between the two. So it did a good job of, you know, defining Mark Spector. And um, yeah, I'm interested to see where where things go from from here. Yeah, no, I enjoyed the art a lot, um, and he just kind of stands out for me. He did a lot of cover work too, in addition to that. And it was always the variant cover I would grab would be Greg Smallwood because there's a very organic, rough pencil feel to everything. That uh, to me, it just stood out above everything else. Uh, yeah, no, no. Now you've you've uh, you've said that I I would I would throw in my vote as well i think that that really it really did stand out i mean there were various artists involved in that series but he was the main one and uh, yeah I'd, i'll be interested to see what what he comes up with next because yeah it was it was a worst a very individual style and it was yeah very atmospheric it's very cool and that, there's a few other categories i just want to run past you to get your opinion and i'm not trying to put you on the spot because i know for myself i had a hard time trying to figure out out of all the books I read, like I had to go back through the list and look at everything I read and who worked on them. It, was, it took me a while, but uh, best inker, and that's hard because there aren't many inkers anymore on books that work separately from a penciler. And only only two stood out in my mind was Tom Palmer and Danny Mickey on Batman. Uh, yeah, I mean to be honest, I I couldn't really speak to that too much i mean again my go-to place is, is going to be doom patrol but I, ca- I can't i do know the the inca but i can't think of the name of his top of his head um off the top of my head, i can't think of the name of the top of anyone's head uh, <laughs> but uh yeah i i that's not really one for me that I'm afraid the inker, not you know, the, basically as Ke- they're just tracers, aren't they? As as, as Kevin Smith, there. I'm saying this ironically. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Thanks for pointing that out. It's gonna be a firestorm. Don't the entire inker <laughs> crowd. <laughs> no, no, the best. Yeah, definitely the best inkers really add a lot to. It, it makes it makes or breaks sometimes. Uh, no, the it, work it yet. does. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just not something I I, nece- I I mean, I for me with inkers, I I distinguish an inker when there's a, a pencil I like, and I can see oh suddenly that doesn't look so good, and that's because it hasn't got the right inker on it. Yeah, same thing for the colors too. I look at some artwork where there's just um, they just have the penciler or the the line artist. Uh, they'll color the work, and I, and sometimes that's more depth and dimensionality to it. And I look at it and say, now would this look better in black and white than in color? If you take away some of the the, the depth and shading and separation that's in there, or would it look better with a different colorist? And I think some books would do better probably as black and white or with a different colorist, honestly. <laughs> so mm. I, I can see some differences there. Yeah. So it's tough for me to pick like best letter or best colorist because. Well, first for me, it's hard to and distinguish the best letterer. It really is. Um, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it really yeah. supports the work, and it can mess up the work. But it really, it's just if you do your job well, no one really notices. I, I don't mean that as a, an insult or anything like that. But no. it's just, you know, it's just just the way. If it's done well, it doesn't yeah. detract from anything. No, I mean when when lettering has has gone wrong, 
that's the first thing you notice when you look at a page. It, it wants to, you know, it's got to be strong, it's got to be solid, but if if that is the thing that stands out when you're looking at a page, that's generally, that's not what you want from lettering. Yeah. Now, the best continuing series, limited series, um, that one for me, and I looked at the terms of a limited series, I had to go with the vision. Okay. I never read that. I know oh. I got a lot of acclaim. I mean, I know that's what, what's his, Tom, what's his... What's his name that does Batman now? Tom King. Yes. So I, 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 I believe the vision is what, you know, sort of brought him to prominence and, and that has, has landed in that gig. Um, I've been reading the, uh, I read the, the Batman Flash crossover starting off the whole Watchmen thing. I think he was involved in that. That was cool. Um, and I'm still following, I'm, I'm not a, a huge DC guy, but uh, I'm still following the Flash off the back of that and i'm looking forward to like i know they've got this thing coming with superman with the watchmen and there's going to be like a 12 issue maxi series i'm i'm into all this it's, it's intriguing yeah i don't read a whole lot of dc i'm still following batman um as for the vision if you haven't read it i, I didn't pick it up at first i just heard so much good buzz about it and how it was like the best new series of 2016 so i bought it in trade which is even a better way for me to read it, just to kind of get caught up. And wow, man, some emotional gut punch stories there. I mean, it's okay. Whew, yeah, it's it's. Yeah, you, you, I think you'd really like it a lot. It's really, yeah, really good. Yeah, I might I might check out the trade on that. I, another thing that's just occurred to me off the back of what we're saying, um, I'm, I'm still waiting on this. I ordered this. Uh, I don't know if Tom King's involved in this. This Batman Elmer Fudd uh, one shot. Oh yeah. Which yes. was a surprise hit, and looks quite. It's done in a quite sort of gritty, uh, sort of noirish type feel, and uh, that looks cool. Uh, but yeah, the, the first print sold out, uh, but I've ordered the second, so I'm looking forward to that. I, I feel like he might be the writer on that, but I couldn't swear to it. Yeah, that I didn't read that one, but I did hear a lot of positive buzz about that. Not only online, but in my local comic shop as well people just talking about that um, yeah yeah well i mean it was you know it was such a surprise hit i mean who thought you know batman and elmer fudd for starters you think that would be played for jokes uh but it's no it's it's quite good uh i'd, I'd recommend i'd say it's not an easy one to get hold of but you can check out a preview of it online i'd, I'd recommend because that that what once i saw that i was like yeah i want this yeah i'm i'm actually cheating right now uh, trying to find out who worked on it i don't normally look up things online while i'm talking but you're right it is tom king it is right see that's the thing as well you know you, you kind of you know that that name doesn't suggest they're going to put you know top talent on something like that and and yeah they have and it's uh and the art the art's very cool as well who's the who's the artist oh yes that i did know about was lee weeks uh is the lee artist weeks, right, yeah right. I, that i i probably should have picked it up just given that it was for me i mean tom king yes i mean after reading the vision but lee weeks is phenomenal um so <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna have to buy that as well pick it up and read it <laughs> yeah it's 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 an, an interesting curio that and uh, I also struggled with the best single issue uh, last year because I was trying to pick just one that I really liked, and I, I just couldn't think of one. And then I finally just came down on DC Rebirth, that, that first issue. Yeah, yeah, that was good because, again, I, you know, I, I – much as I love Doom Patrol, that's kind of you know left field in the in the DC universe. But I I picked that up and that that you know that got me. And I'm you know as I say this this whole Watchmen thing that they're, they're building, I'm I'm into that. So yeah, it was that was cool. Yeah. And they have other categories too. And um, let's see here, uh, best comic strip or panel. Now that one I kind of racked my brain on because I'm like, well, I don't read a whole lot of comic strips. And it would be – I couldn't think of a particular panel. But then the one thing that came to mind, which actually ended recently, was the Nexus comic strip newspaper, which was also a Kickstarter, and that was Steve Rude. So it's not available to everyone unless they purchase a subscription for it through right. Steve Rude's site. But for, you know, for me, in terms of a strip or panel, that was my favorite. It's actually in newsprint form. It comes like okay. a four or five a page, four to six page newspaper, giant size, you know, big cartoon. So that just the format alone was really cool. You can get it in regular newsprint or like a high quality type newsprint. So that that was my pick. I don't know if anything springs to mind for you 
for best comic strip? No, it's it's not not something I I, I follow at all. I'm afraid of you've 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 got me with that one. I'm afraid. Now, web comics I do follow, um, not as much as I I'd like to, because with the pile of books I'm looking at them and they're saying read me now. But yeah. the, for me, the web comics, my favorite out of all of them, and there were a lot of good ones last year, was the Red Hook. Dean Haspel did that. Uh, his new Brooklyn series with other artists as well. And that's that to me was one. I think it's on Webtoons um, where you can actually read that for free. And that's very much of a combination Golden Age, Silver Age. But with Dino, it's you know got his, his uh, hip dialogue and everything in there. So it's a lot of fun, a little different. I don't know if you have a chance to follow any webcomics. No, I uh, I don't. It's I I'm very much I like to read them a physical comic. Um, so even like I'll occasionally get something on Comicsology if if it's you know if I haven't been able to get the physical one and I find myself it it just kind of sits there. I I just I don't know something about having the the physical copy is is a big part of the, the enjoyment for me. Oh, so sure. Yeah. Online is, is not, uh, not my go-to place. No, me neither. It's great for reading books for interviews and doing reviews or recommendations. And sometimes I get caught up, but I can get in over my head with reading a lot of digital stuff and not get to my weekly print stuff. And I just kind of like to sit down and in my beanbag with a nice beverage and read a comic yeah. book. That's that's for me. That's a very pleasurable experience, yeah. and I enjoy doing that. Um, a couple other categories. I want to get your opinion. Best presentation in design. Now that threw me. I'm like, a best presentation in design. What could that be? And then maybe you saw this. This struck me was the Criminal Tenth Anniversary Special Magazine by Ed Brubaker. Uh, nope. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Let me describe this one to you. It was. The cover was like an old 70s magazine from Marvel. And it, it was a kung fu type cover with a werewolf, a werewolf kung fu cover. But it was so cool, so kind of 70s retro. And it was in a larger size, like a magazine size, versus the comic book, which was standard size. You could get it that way too. And there would be interspersed throughout the story a page from that magazine that, that they're they're harking back to in the story so that was a really cool idea um okay. that was yeah it's it was really a lot of fun and uh that would i would have to say be the best design of 2016 just the way they did the large size magazine even made it look distressed in how they printed it so like, like it was been on the rack for a while you know like an old something you've had for a long time so really cool that's yeah that that is cool my my place to go with this one is is going to be back to doom patrol where for those that aren't aware, the first issue had this, like, uh, there's a thing about the, a world being inside a gyro, and they had a, a gyro on the cover, and you could peel this gyro off to reveal uh, the universe within, and that's, uh, that's, that was a good, weird, offbeat thing to, to relaunch Doom Patrol with. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Favorite new series? Uh, now, I mean, for you, it's probably Doom Patrol if it came out, it started last year. It would be. But as I've already <laughs> vote for Doom Patrol in, in every character degree, including ones it doesn't even fit into. Uh, <laughs> similarly, though, uh, on the same line, the young animal line, Shade the Changing Girl, that's, that's good. Uh, and you kind of don't know where it's going because it started out like, you know, this, this girl had, had sort of, uh, well, this, this alien girl had, had kind of taken over the body of this teenage bully and uh, it was it was cool, kind of all about that world. But now she's she's sort of gone on a road trip, like she went to, to Gotham, and and she's going beyond that. And it's it's a criticism of it was for people that I I didn't read the original Shade the Changing Man, but for fans of that, that it wasn't weird enough, it wasn't out there enough. And I think it is now that they've got her out of the world she was introduced in and, and going beyond that, it does feel like it's going in a, in a more sort of weird and, and funky direction. And, uh, yeah, it's a cool book. Okay, that's a good one. I like um, Black Hammer, Dark Horse Comics, the kind of golden age heroes who wind up in this other dimension. They're stuck there and they can't get back home. Um, right. Yeah. yeah, that one, that that to me, I'd have to call that one is my, my favorite new series. And um, the last one is favorite new talent. And I'm always like, okay, well, who was new last year? And maybe they're not new, but new to me. Yeah. And I had to go with uh, Miko Suyan, 
who does uh, or who was working on Bloodshot. Okay, I'm yeah, I'm not I'm not familiar with the whole Valiant. I don't really know what's going on with, with all that. There's only a couple of Valiant books I read, and Bloodshot is one of them. That and Britannia, those two for sure. Yeah, but his artwork is is highly realistic and very detailed. Um, yeah. Reminds me of the old school, uh, you know, kind of uh, black and white magazines, but even more detailed than that. So I was really just instantly impressed and stunned by his artwork. And by the way, that best design book, Deadly Hands of Criminal, the the werewolf, and it was called Fang, the Kung Fu werewolf. And he's prominently on the cover. So <laughs> You can't argue with that, can oh, you? Oh, it is, it is so cool. And it was by Brubaker, Sean Phillips, and Brett Weiser. So right, okay. wonderful it's art team. team then, yeah. yeah, yeah, really cool stuff. I do read Criminal, and that's, that was just a great issue. But yeah. uh, any new favorite new talents for you that you could think of? Well, um, you've, you've, you know, you've put Greg Smallwood in my, in my head now, so that's, that's what I'd come back to. As I say, I couldn't think of any, any artists that would, had particularly stood out for me, but, but now you've said him, he, he does. And, of course, Nick Darrington on Doom Patrol. Mm-hmm. No, I agree with you. I was like, Greg for new talent. Oh, maybe I should put him in. And then I thought about Mikko, and I was like, well, I'll give – I already mentioned Greg, so I'll give Mikko a yeah. shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, was, I was with you there. I was thinking the same thing. But, yeah, I mean, really that – the the feel of that book, I think, under a, a different artist, wouldn't have been anywhere near as strong as it was. Yeah, definitely. But uh, thanks for playing along with that, because that, again, is going to be the Ringo Awards at the Baltimore Comic Con. So the ballot nominations are closing the day this podcast goes up at midnight, and then the official voting will begin. So, uh, you know, everyone should look for that, and that'll they'll have the awards at the Baltimore Comic Con in September. But Sam, one thing I wanted to ask you, and we talked about Doctor Who last time. As you know, since we last spoke, they've selected a new Doctor. Yeah. Jodie Whittaker. Mm-hmm. So what's the reaction? How has it been? I've seen a lot of very positive reaction on the internet, and I've seen some not-so-positive reaction. I think the reaction is 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 generally positive. Um, I mean, I think it it makes sense. You, you're always going to get, you know, a not necessarily fanboy element, but certainly predominantly a fanboy element that, you know, Doctor Who's got to be the one that, God, I've just committed the cardinal sin of calling Doctor the Doctor Doctor Who there. That bait that, 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 the fanboys. Uh, it doesn't have to be a man. Um, they've already established, you know, the, the Time Lord's, you know, gender is, is, is not male exclusive. I think it's I think it's good. Uh, I don't know the actress, but I know that the the showrunner that's taking over is from the series Broadchurch, and she's also out of it. And that was a very big show in the UK and very well yes. received. So it makes sense for him to you know bring someone he's he's worked in from that. I you know it, it's good. It's it's fine. Yeah, it's it's fine. <laughs> I agree. I heard that and I was like, huh, hmm. Well, they've established it can be a woman. Why not? They've done it with the master. And all, all I care about is a good Doctor Who episode. I want to see something well-written, and I want to see a good Doctor. And I did see yeah. Broadchurch. Um, and I wouldn't have known who she was had I not seen Broadchurch. In fact, I didn't recognize her at first because her hair was lighter than it was in the show. Right. But, um, hey, you know, as long as it's a good Doctor, I don't care. I just want to see a good Doctor Who. Though, I mean, I, I think... <sighs> When when they change a character's gender or race, I don't think it's it's necessarily always the the way to go. But in in the case of Doctor, the Doctor, uh, it's you know it there is there is no problem with it. Basically, the the only problem I can really see is if you're sexist. Yeah, and there were some others in the running for it that I saw some buzz about, and they dropped off pretty quickly. One was Chris Marshall, who I had no idea who he was. Um, yes, well, Chris Marshall is is well known in the UK, and though I think he would have worked, uh, I'm kind of glad it's not him because those of us that remember uh, my family and uh, a series of telephone company adverts that he did may may not <laughs> may not <laughs> may not look back on his on his oove with a, a a nostalgic glow. So I'm. Uh, Though I do think, yes, he could have worked. I'm, I'm quite all right with it not being Chris Marshall. Okay. And another name I saw who I did recognize because I'm catching up rapidly on Game of Thrones was uh, 
Tilda Swinton was also bantied about as possible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Tilda Swinton is... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, she, you know, is, is she in the new Thor? Or am I oh, I don't know no, if she I'm, is or not. I think I'm confusing her with... Um, uh, with another actress, but yeah, but I mean, you know, a lot of these things were, were purely speculative and were never even even remotely going to happen anyway. So, so this is this is the doctor we've got. I'm happy with that and uh, looking forward to seeing. You know, Capaldi, great. So, uh, see what comes next. Yeah, it should uh, really help to uh, grow the audience too, and maybe freshen up the show a bit, and maybe help boost the ratings. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, one I know from speaking to someone that, that was a big um, big Doctor Who fan that I think uh, going from like eye candy is, is not the word but sort of a, a, a younger more more handsome Doctor in in like you know the the, the ones that preceded um, Capaldi I think possibly that they they lost well as I understand from what she was saying that they did lose some some audience from that so it's not a bad move to go back to uh, young and attractive not that you know obviously uh, Mr Capaldi is a very attractive <laughs> man in, in, in his in his own way but right. they did constantly reference in the first series how King old he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But no, great. I mean, the the one where he, the one that was basically just him in that tower, that rotating tower when he was, you know, smashing through uh, that wall was just superb. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I look forward to that in 2018. So we'll, we'll check it out. And I'll, I know I'll be there watching it. The whole family will be there watching it. Yeah. And, you know, we're not done with Capaldi yet. We've got the, the Christmas special. That's right. Well, Sam, uh, thanks so much. Kickstarter's going on now for Geek Girl Volume 1, Lightning Strikes. I'm sorry we didn't have more to talk about. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it would... <laughs> and the two of us just have nothing to talk about. It's terrible. Well, this, this, is a, this is a problem. Uh, but, well, you know, we, we, we got through it somehow. That's okay. <laughs> Sam, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thank you for having me again. All right, and that's my interview with Sam Johnson following up on Geek Girl, Volume 1, Lightning Strikes. It's always fun to talk with Sam about comic books and Doctor Who and getting caught up on all that stuff. We always have plenty of things to talk about, and it's always great to hear Sam's enthusiasm for Doom Patrol, and I am going to check that book out. In fact, I double-checked that book, and it's on my pre-order list for the next issue because it features Mike Allred on art. So that is one I will be picking up on Wednesday. So thank you for joining me for this podcast episode on Monday. Normally, they'll be out on Thursday, and there will be one this week on Thursday dropping as well. Share your love and enthusiasm for the show. Reach out to me through Facebook or Twitter at Creator Talks Pod. That's at Creator Talks Pod. I spend most of my time on Twitter, by the way, but I post updates on both. And I also have pictures on Instagram, Creator Talks Pod. That's Creator Talks Pod. Most of that information is either upcoming episodes or pictures about uh, places I'm at on location for vacations or sometimes at cons. So I don't do a whole lot of Instagram, but I do have an account and I do post on that account occasionally. And on my website, I'm also posting recommended reading. You can find that on creatortalks.com. That's creatortalks.com. Also, you can email me from the website. Don't forget, you can subscribe to the podcast. All the episodes are free, and they are available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and they're also available now on Podbean. The SoundCloud episodes are coming down at the end of the month on the 31st of July, so if you listen through that platform, download the ones you'd like to keep, but they're all moving over to Podbean, the site that I'm using to host the podcast, but again, it's all on the other channels I just mentioned. Okay, I'm out of here. For Creator Talks, I'm Christopher Calloway. Until next time.